Amen. If you will, turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I'll say this is a, it's a beautiful morning, and uh, we need to remember it's the Lord today, and uh, uh, all of this is our, uh, ours for Him. He's blessed us, and, and we're, we're thankful this morning. In the book of First of Second Corinthians, <clears throat> Paul had uh, sent a letter there to the church there, and he had given them several, several things that they needed to consider. But in uh, in the second chapter, uh, Paul writes uh, in verse one, "I but I determined this with myself that I would not come again to you in heaviness." And Paul. Uh, uh, is, is telling them this morning, uh, I, I'm not gonna. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to. Uh, I'm not going to expect uh, anything but uh, the, the glory of the Lord in the in the services. For it says, "For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me." So this morning. You know, as we come this way, we need to all be glad. We need to be praising the Lord. And, uh, you know, a frown, a lot of times, will uh, turn a lot of faces You're right. uh, to a frown. And uh, we're, this morning, we're happy that we can be in the house of the Lord this morning. And we want to encourage every one of you here uh, that's here this morning to uh, continue serving the Lord, be faithful in the services for Him. Because <clears throat> He said uh, in verse verse 3 I think it is he said uh, and I and I wrote this letter to you lest when I come I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice having no confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all so he's wanting to find a happy bunch of people and this morning if uh, if I know my heart, we should be all be happy. Amen. We should be happy if uh, if uh, we've had a bad week. We should be happy if we've uh, uh, had sickness or whatever. We should be happy because Amen. the thing of it is, we know the Lord and forgiveness of sin. And one of these days, we're going to be around the throne, uh, worshiping Him, and uh, all of these worldly things will have passed away, and uh, all things will be new and we'll be happy. And uh, so. We need to enjoy this happiness before we get there where the happiness is at. Because that's living by faith. Now, in verse chapter 3, I'm going to read a uh, verse or two here to you. Kind of lead into this uh, this message this morning. But in verse 3 it says, Do, you, do we uh, <clears throat> begin again to commend ourselves or need we, as some others, epistles of comm commend commendations to you or letters of commendation to you. Now he's asking them this question. Do we need these letters or have we already proven ourselves? Because this is the second time Paul has wrote to them. He says, Ye are our epistle written in our hearts. Know and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. Ministering by us. Written not with ink. But with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of heart. Now, I'm <clears throat> going to read on just a little bit further in verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, talking about the law, but of the spirit, the faith, and, and of the letter. <clears throat> for the, the for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Amen. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stone, was glorious, so that the children of Israel should not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance. Which glory was to be done away, and and we know this morning that they're talking about the law, and that they, <clears throat> the veil was on the face of Moses, or that because they couldn't look at him, because when he come in the, in the presence of God, 
he shone like a, a blinding light and he had to cover his face and he says here uh, notice this in verse uh, the latter part of uh, verse 7 he says uh, uh, was glory so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away and of course we're talking of the law how shall how shall not the ministry of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glorious, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. And so this morning we have much more than the law. We have grace. And that's what uh, that Paul Amen. was trying to write to these people and tell them. And I'm sure that a lot of them were still <clears throat> trying to abide by some of the law. But... I want to read just a little bit more and then we'll get to the lesson. But anyway, <clears throat> in verse 10, For even that which was made glorious hath no glory in this respect, by reason of glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, talking about the law, much more that which remaineth in glory. And that's uh, is glorious. Praise. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness, of speech and not as Moses which had put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfast and look to the end of that which was abolished and they couldn't see the end of the law but their minds were blinded for until this day remain, remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament and listen this is pointing to his children the Jews the Jews still, they still use the Old Testament a lot. They still don't believe in Jesus Christ. They still believe in keeping the laws. And this is what it says here. <clears throat> but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. They cannot see because they've never been touched with grace. Uh, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty so he's saying one of these days this veil is going to be taken away Amen. and just like it was <clears throat> when Jesus Christ died and the and the and the the veil in the temple rent from bottom to top and that was a type of the uh, grace of God being shown Amen. that the Gentile seen this and so uh, but the Jew they, they, haven't, they haven't seen it yet. They haven't truly seen it yet. And so they, they say Jesus Christ is not the Savior, but Jesus Christ was a good man. And that uh, one day, one day God will come back and He will come back. And Jesus Christ will come back. And Jesus Christ will call out those that are His and say, come up hither. And then later on He'll come back. And when He comes back, He'll come back to the Jews. And then that's when this veil is going to be lifted from their eyes. And in a moment, they'll see the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll know Him. They'll understand Him. And they'll praise Him. Amen. Uh, and so this is why I wanted to read, the, read this to you. Because He says, <clears throat> Now the Lord, in verse 17, we'll, and we'll be through. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass... The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, and that's from law to grace, even as the, as the Spirit of the Lord. And so when we look into a glass now, we, there's not that, we see ourselves, but listen, our, ourselves is the, uh, our bodies that we have is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we see that, we, ought to, we recognize, hey, that the Spirit of God is here with us. And Amen. So there's no veil there that, can, that, that doesn't see the Spirit of, a, of, of the Lord. So in verse 1 of chapter 4, and we'll get into the lesson just a little bit here. <clears throat> Therefore, seeing we have these ministries, as we have received mercy... We faint not. Now he's saying here, hey, this is the reason why I'm, I'm writing this letter to you. And he says, we have these, these ministries to come to you and to reveal the truth of God's word. And he says, we faint not at this. And he says here, uh, but we have mercy. So, but have renounced or we have done away with 
the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness or cunning ways, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Amen. This is what Paul's letter wrote to the church there at Corinth. And a lot of, and I believe in one place there that there was some stuff going on in the church that didn't need to be going on in the church. And he's, he's writing to them concerning this craftiness. And we, we understand that there were many people back then and even in this time pushing the law. Pushing the law, pushing works for salvation, pushing uh, everything except grace uh, and faith. And so he's saying here, we have we have uh, dis we have renounced it. That it's not right that that you use works for salvation, but that you have grace. And he says here in verse in the latter part of verse two, he says, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man conscience every man's conscience in the sight of God now verse 3 but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost Amen. now here is the here is the the uh, one of the most important verses I think that that a person can really get down and study the when he says uh, uh, if but if our gospel be hid now the gospel is hid it's hid to the Jews. It's hid to thousands and thousands and thousands of Gentiles. It's hid. One reason why is because they are not supposed to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was a, there is a calling, there is a choice that God Amen. made concerning His people or His His children, and He chose them before Amen. before the world began. And Jesus was there with him, and he chose the people that he would call to him. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that won't work. Yes, it will work. Mm -hmm. It does work. Amen. Because God is God of all, and he knows what he wanted. He knows what he is doing. And listen, if it, if it wasn't that way, why would, it, why would it put this right here? Because he says, it's hid from those. And who can be saved? If the glory of God is hid from them. now, a lot of times good preaching, good teaching will open the eyes of those that God uh, uh, hasn't opened their eyes yet. It will open them, and they can see. But listen, there is a number of people in this uh, in this creation that God created. There is a group of people. And I don't know them, and you don't know them, and if you did, we wouldn't have to go out here and witness. Mm -hmm. But listen, there is a group of people that will not be exposed to grace. You're right. Amen. It's there. Amen. And so listen, people, we, 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 when we look at somebody that's sat in church for 30 years, and they're just as, I mean, they, they walk upright, and they, they, they're, they're, they're a good, solid person. And why in the world ain't they saved? Listen, there ain't but one reason. You're right. You, 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 you talk, you talk to them. You read scriptures. You set every example you can, and it don't make no difference. Now, I'm not saying that that person is not called of God or, or not chosen of God. But listen, when God gets ready for that individual eyes to be open, they'll be open. You're right. And, and, and not until then. Amen. Listen, if they're not a call uh, elect of Jesus Christ and <coughs> God, then hey, it'll never happen. Amen. It'll never happen. And people say, well, <laughs> I I just don't believe God would do that. God's a God of love. Yes, He is. He is. And He's a God of chastisement too. Mm -hmm. But listen, this morning, we need to understand that the God that we're serving this morning is a God of love. And listen, He has chosen you or He hasn't. Mm -hmm. You know. people. I, these people say, well, I don't know if I've been saved or not. Listen, if they'll tell you that, they ain't been saved. 
<laughs> I believe this morning when, uh, when, when God calls a person, when the Holy Spirit speaks to a person, listen, I know myself, and I'm not no different from anybody else, I know when God called me, I know Amen. when He tore my heart up, and it was, wasn't a five-minute deal either. And listen, I remember it, and I know it, and if I if it's with me and he does it to somebody else in a different way, listen, I, I can't I, I I but I know what I, I was, Amen. and I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And so listen, this morning people know when they're saved. You're right. And if 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 God don't call them, listen, it's just it's the myth it's it's like it says here, the gospel is hid from them and the, and the, and and they don't know it, they don't understand it. But it's not no excuse for us. Not to try to keep on passing out Bibles. Amen. It's not no excuse for us not to keep praying for those that we've seen 10, 15, 20 years going to church and they don't make, there's no fruit there. There's nothing there to show that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Listen, we still need to keep on Amen. keeping on. Amen. You're right. Praying because, hey, He sent His Son into this world to die for us. And so, that's it, people. And and if if, if the, the blood will cover our sins, Amen. And, and and all God's got to do is is speak to our hearts. So here he says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, and which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into, unto them. Now this light that he's talking about here, in John 1, he says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Mm -hmm. And the light and the darkness comprehend, the light comprehend, the, the darkness did not understand the light. I'll get it right in a minute. And so this light that he cast on, on the earth, this light that shines in our hearts, this light that when, when, like when he's talking about there in one of the scriptures where we stand before a mirror and see, listen, we know, and we that are saved know what that light is about. And here he says here, uh, in, in whom the glory, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into the, unto them. So this gospel that we're, we're preaching or teaching, this gospel is a, is, is a, uh, it's the truth of, of, of Jesus' teaching. Amen. And also, it's, it's this light that we're talking about. Because, listen, when he said, let there be light, it wasn't the sun. Right. Because he didn't do that for three more days. Mm -hmm. And so that light, that light shined in the darkness. And that darkness represented death. It represented hell. Amen. It represented uh, uh, uncleanliness. It a sin and all, but listen, it shined in there, and that darkness, it just couldn't comprehend it. just right. couldn't understand it. And today, it's the same way with people. Those that are lost, if that light don't shine on them, listen, they'll never understand. Uh, if, it, if it does, if that dark, if that dark, they'll never understand it. They'll never see it. And so, it's, it's our duty this morning as a Christian to remember these people and to pray for them and ask the Lord to, uh, if it's His will, to, to save them. And, uh, you know, I don't want my worst enemy. I don't want my worst, worst, worst enemy. I don't want to, you know, I, and I could go on and go on about the, the terrible sins that men and women and, and uh, do to children and things like that. But listen, I just pray for them that they'll be, that they'll be forgiven. Mm. So here again, we we'll get back in our lesson. In verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Now here we see Paul 
writing this to these people and he's saying, hey, we don't preach it because of us, but we preach it because we love you. And uh, he says here, for God command... Uh, let, me, let me read this again. Uh, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. And when we, when we think of the word servant, we know this morning that Jesus Christ was a servant. He came to this world as a servant. And we as God's people need to conduct ourselves and apply ourselves as servants. And listen, when, when, when all fails, we, where we need to be is right at the bottom of the totem pole. Amen. Up and, uh, and looking towards Jesus Christ. And, and we're, we're there trying to be a servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, it, it, sh it shows us what our condition is a lot of times when we, uh, we think that we're a little bit better than somebody else, you know. So, but in, the, in this, in your, for God, uh, and I've read this, but I'll read it again. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. Our spirit, when Jesus Christ went to heaven, He said, I'll send the Comforter. Now people, this morning, when, when we received the call of, uh, from God, or when, we, when He called us, listen, he sent that spirit and it's, it's found its lodging place within us. Amen. You, you, can, you can say what you want to, but this morning, your vessel, if you're saved, that earthly vessel is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's there and it makes, it makes intercessions for us. Amen. It tells us things that we a lot of times don't want to hear. It tells us when we're wrong. Mm -hmm. And listen, it also comforts our heart because he said, I'll send you a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And so that comforter that's in your inside, inside this, this old fleshly temple, listen, one day when your spirit, when this old flesh dies, your spirit's going to leave mm -hmm. and it's going to go back to, 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 to the one that did it. And so right now you have uh, the Holy Spirit within you making intercessions to Jesus and, and talking to you and keeping you keeping you out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Because if you'll listen to it, if you'll just listen to it, it'll keep you where that you won't be rolling around in bed half the night thinking about how ungodly you've been. And, 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 to, and so here he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Spirit is there for. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Amen. Now that's what I'm talking to you about this morning, that Holy Spirit, sir. And listen, he says, we are troubled on every side. Well, Jesus said, hey, I'm going to send you a comforter. Now, what can comfort you more than anything else is that spirit within. And, of course, you know, you have brothers and sisters, you have friends that can say, well, everything's going to be all right. But listen, they don't know the situation like the Holy Spirit does. Amen. And he speaks to your heart and comforts your heart. And he says here, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. People this morning, that's a Christian's life. Uh, whether we want to admit it or not, listen, there's a lot of things that goes on in our life. Uh, and if it wasn't for, it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit watching after us and caring for us and moving these things out of our way as we go through life. Listen, people, we would we would be already dead. Mm -hmm. We would these things these things here are in our life. But listen, the Lord Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit, they are one and they move these things around. And listen, I know people, 
I know. Because I've had it in my life, and you, if you can think, you, you ought to know, you've had it in your life. Amen. Things, Amen. things moved around, things moved around, and you were you were set free in, 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 in from some of these things, this perplexity, and, 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 uh, and uh, all these things, bearing about, uh, die, uh, always, he says in verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. And so, again, we this morning keep these things in our hearts, the dying of Jesus Christ, because we know this morning that He died for us. He shed His blood on the cross of Calvary. And that blood covered, it covered our sins. Amen. And so when God, when God looks on us, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He don't see this old ungodly, unsaved human being uh, that I'm living in, that I, that I have around me. But He sees that soul, He sees that spirit for that Jesus Christ's blood took away the sins of that person. And when He did, He covered it. He covered it with His blood. And God cannot, because God cannot look upon sin. And so when he that blood, that blood covered that covers that sin, and we're no longer uh, 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 punished for that sin that of unbelief that we did have, and we won't ever have to under, have to go through that again because listen, that thing is covered forever. Amen. And God's God don't never see it no more, and it's cast. In his back. And so he says here, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest, revealed in our bodies. And we this morning as God's people need to walk in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord. You're right. And care conduct ourselves like uh, uh, a safe person ought to. So he said, for we which live are all always delivered unto death for Jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh so then death worketh in us but life in you and Amen. So we have we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ there is an eternal life in all of those that God has chose and if there's one you know this morning that that is uncertain about their salvation, then I suggest that you really and truly get to thinking about it and, 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 and try to get some help. Because if there's a doubt there, and, I, and I'm not saying that I never doubted my salvation, but listen, people, it won't stay there. It can't stay there. Because the Holy Spirit is there. Amen. And he will, yeah. he will take you right back to that place. He'll, he'll assure you, even though the devil is on top of you, clawing and jerking and trying to cause you to do something. But that Holy Spirit will, will take you and he'll show you and say, this is it. And listen, it's gone. Amen. But if you can't get that assurance, if you can't get that assurance, I would that you would uh, say something. Ask, ask for some help. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, it's, it's sort of like these, this, uh, some of these kids that goes out and kill 15, 20 kids. Listen, they needed help, mm -hmm. and nobody wouldn't help. And that's the same way it is with a lost person. A lot of times, they're ashamed to ask somebody that's been in church for years and years and years not saved. They say, "Well, they think I'm saved. I'm ashamed to ask." You don't be ashamed. Amen. Right. Because listen. You're going to have to stand before God. That's it. You're going to have to. You're going to have to give an account. And one day you look back and say, "Oh, if I just went to the pastor, or if I just talked to somebody about my soul, I might not might not have this depart from me. I never knew you." So that's that's the thing that we were put here for is to get ready to go. Mm -hmm. And so that's. Our lesson for today, and I hope that it, it'll uh, it'll strengthen you in some way. And if 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 there's something that's missing in your life, that this will give you a courage to ask somebody, look to somebody, 
uh, try to get some try to get some weight really because uh, there's no need of a person living here 75 to 100 years thinking he's about halfway saved and then dying and going to hell and the rest of the time in eternity uh, suffering. So you know you can you can get some relief through Jesus. Amen. Thank you all so much.